If the war had happened earlier, even like a year or two earlier, France may have stood a chance with this rugged and frankly quite handsome aircraft. Hey guys, or should I say bonjour, c'était mon making temps. Okay, I know my French is bad and I'll probably make a few French jokes during the course of this video. I apologise to all you native French speakers or just anyone who can speak French, much less than me. <laughs> Welcome to Fevier Francais, the French February month that I'm paying on just in celebration of French aircraft and the only reason I'm doing this is because I basically just went on a French building spree. I don't know how it happened or why it happened, but I ended up buying a load of French World War II aircraft and building them and I just couldn't choose what to do. I thought, you know, I'll just do a whole month of French aviation. Why not? <laughs> this video itself is looking at the Wayne Saunier 406 by Hella in 170 second scale. As usual, we're going to be having a look at the history of the aircraft itself in real life. We'll have a brief look at the aircraft in gaming and then we'll get into the unboxing of the kit before we go into the construction and finishing of the aircraft. If you do need it though, there are timestamps or chapters for this video, so if you're interested in just the gaming, go have a look at that, and if you're interested in just the construction, you can go look at that. Obviously, you can watch all of it if you want to, and just take breaks and use the chapters to divide up your viewing experience. <laughs> this is all very new to me doing a themed month, so let me know what you think. If you like it, hit the like button and remember to subscribe to our channel as well. I really do appreciate that, but let's get into the history of the Blade Saunier MS-406. So the 406 was designed to replace a lot of the, what you'd probably view as more vintage style aircraft in French armament at the time. You know, the biplanes and parasol fighters of 1920s and 1930s, or very early 1930s as it would stand. This came about from a requirement from the service technique de l'aéronautique, who issued a C1 requirement for a single seat interceptor fighter. As I was explaining earlier, this is an evolution at French aviation, and to me, it's very much sort of a development like you'd see from, I'd say, the Hawker Hind to the Hawker Hurricane. It's, you know, that big leaf that you see. Obviously, other single seat fighters would come about as well, and we'll go into those in other videos, probably. <laughs> okay, as a probably, but definitely, but let's do to the MS406 and now, shall we? With features that were becoming very standard on more modern fighters, such as a variable picture propeller, flaps, and the ever important enclosed cockpit. The MS 406 or 405, as it was initially, was definitely much more modern than what was already existing within France's Armée de l'Air, the French Air Force. How the aircraft was also subject to many discussions, I want to say arguments though, because I feel like they were very heated, but many discussions from, you know, the more traditional engineers and those who saw modernity, with many viewing that a biplane and the traditional construction methods were more appropriate, whilst others were looking at what, you know, the future could do and how we could modernise French production. The aircraft sort of became a compromise of both, and it was a mixed media construction. Now, the first prototype for the MS-405 flew on the 8th of August 1935, and this aircraft did show that the countless discussions that were held did prove off to be effective with the aircraft flying well and performing within expectations. The second prototype would fly on January 20th, 1937, with a modified wing changing the dihedral profile of the aircraft, and there were also changes to the propeller and the manufacturers. Now, the engine in the first prototype was the Hispano Suiza 12 why GRS? I definitely had to check that because I could never remember these naming schemes. And it was then changed to the 12Y CRS in the second prototype, which had an additional 40 horsepower. The upgraded version of the aircraft did fly with the original prototype at the Paris Air Show, which was preceded by an order for an initial production run or pre production run of 16 aircraft. It is also worth noting that the aircraft flew internationally at places like the Brussels aeronautical exhibition on the 19th of June 1937. Now we will talk about exports later but it was relatively successful. The second prototype of the aircraft would unfortunately be lost but this did not cease development. The aircraft had a new wing or new construction of the wing made which was done in order to save weight for the aircraft. There was also a detachable radiator and we'll talk about that later but let's just say it's a very interesting choice. <laughs> 
The engine was now also changed to the HS12Y3 quad, which was back to 860 horsepower, but was still five miles per hour or eight kilometers an hour faster. The aircraft had changed so much since the MS405, you know, that initial prototype with the fixed undercarriage and, you know, the original profile and shape of the aircraft that it was changed to the MS406. This new version of the aircraft had better armament as well, with the 404 cannon going through the nose cone, through the V of the engine, and also having machine guns in the wings. France ordered a thousand of the MS-406 when the onset of the war was looming in 1938, or in March 1938 specifically. By March in 1940, all 1,000 had been produced for France, and export production was deemed to be appropriate. Several countries had ordered the aircraft and some had secure licensing. We'll go through these so you can see sort of where the spread of the aircraft was. There were 30 that were sent to Finland, and modifications were made in Finland, and we'll look at that another time. And there were 45 that were sent to Turkey. There were also orders placed for Lithuania, Yugoslavia and Poland, but these were cancelled following the war's arrival. In terms of production rights for the aircraft, the aircraft had licensed production secured by Belgium, as we said they displayed that earlier, and also by Switzerland. Now, Belgium would never produce the aircraft in the end, but Switzerland did, and Switzerland made amendments to the aircraft and is perhaps the most famous operator of the type, outside of, obviously, the Army de l'Air, for France. Now some of those further developments that we're talking about from the MS-406 were seen in the new version, the MS-410. Now this included the removal of that detractable radiator that we mentioned earlier into a fixed external radiator. Now when I say about retractable under, now when I say about retractable radiator I literally mean it would just lower from the aircraft needed and it could go back up and it was just another point of failure particularly during the course of a conflict. Now, another issue that MS-406 did see, however, was its guns. They froze at higher altitudes quite frequently, and so with the 410, they made a heating system for the guns to prevent this happening, because obviously that could lead to loss of life for a pilot. All aircraft were meant to be converted to this standard, and only five new 410s would be built. Now, I mentioned a few times that this aircraft was quite capable and would have performed better if the war had been earlier. Now, you need to think about this in context. For the Luftwaffe and even the Regia Aeronautica, they had had experience of fighting in the Spanish Civil War and many of the times that they used that were developed and then used in the Blitzkrieg of Poland, the Phony War and the Battle of France. One of these aircraft? The BF-109. And the BF-109E was prevalent during the course of the Battle of France and by this point was very much outmaneuvering and outpacing the MS-406. Even during the course of the Foley War, the aircraft was not achieving a 1 to 1 kill to loss ratio and this was due to a number of factors including unreliable radiators, freezing guns and poor firepower and just the deterioration of parts. The MS-406 was definitely a transitionary aircraft for the French Air Force and very, very much a product of its time. It was a fighter that was thrown to the walls of the experienced Luftwaffe aircraft and pilots and it really never stood a chance. Now the Finnish and Swiss variants of the aircraft did perform better and I mean Finland always used bizarre types to a really significant level but we're gonna have a look at those in another video when I end up building those because they're definitely on my list. I guess to sum it up I view this aircraft as an attempt to modernize without the experience of any modern air combat. Despite this, it has remained an icon of French aviation, particularly obviously World War II aviation. It's definitely got a very rugged look to it, and as I say, it reminds me of the Hurricane. Okay, I guess we should look at the Marine Saulnier MS-406 in gaming. Well, as usual, we're going to start with Flight Simulator and Combat Flight Simulator, and this aircraft does feature in Combat Flight Simulator, and it also features in Flight Simulator 10. Now, I couldn't see anything in the most modern Flight Simulator, but it's in the odd ones. In Combat Flight Simulator, it's really easily available in Combat Flight Simulator 3, which is perhaps not surprising given the importance of this aircraft. In terms of Flight Simulator, I would say it's an FSX, I couldn't see it in Flight Simulator 2020, and it still looks nice. I've mentioned many times that FSX is probably the most accessible version of Light Simulator around given its low requirements and wealth of free modifications to the game. And to be honest, even a lot of the payware is really cheap now given the game is 
sort of dead. As this aircraft is so famous, much like the Spitfire, it features in most major titles from the IL-2 series. And the aircraft was in the IL-2 series from pretty much the very beginning. It's a beautiful aircraft and again, as I've mentioned many times before, if you want to fly it relatively cheaply, then IL-2 1946 is one of the cheapest flight simulators around and is still one of the best combat flight simulators in terms of realism. Although there are newer IL-2s around, again, this is much more accessible to those on a lower budget. And although there are newer versions of this around, I think I'd probably recommend Wolf Thunder over those, and I'll go into that with you. Now, the reason I think I would choose Wolf Thunder is because there are user-made missions. There are for IL-2 as well, to be fair. But for Wolf Thunder, it's not very hard to make your own missions either. So if you wanted to just make, you know, entire Battle of France, which someone should definitely do, you could do that, you can make an entire campaign, and in fact, I've seen some of them and they're amazing. But also, you get to fly the aircraft alongside other types, and War Thunder has such a wealth of French aircraft available that you could make some truly fantastic battles. In fact, it's what I've been doing for February on Z, French February, is I've been making some sort of cinematic videos with a couple of my friends in War Thunder. These are not masterpieces by any stretch of the imagination, but hopefully I've been able to give you a taste of what the MS-406 is like, and you'll see that video later in the week. I'm really excited about doing them because it's something, again, just a little bit different that I can do for you guys, and I'm really passionate about War Thunder and flight simulators in general, so it's nice for me to do as well. <laughs> okay, let's have a look at the history of this kit. So unsurprisingly, this aircraft is a staple of Heller's product line and was originally released in 1965. There was a United States release by a company called Buzzco in 1967, featuring the French artwork in a much smaller portion of the box with Buzzco across the top. The aircraft was reboxed once more in the 1960s with what looks like just slightly amended artwork. It was re-released again in 1979 with sort of that black box artwork and you can see it obviously on the screen but that was sort of a, a really well known era of hella boxings I would say. There was a really interesting Finnish boxing of the aircraft in 1988 and somewhere I do have a Finnish boxing, not this aircraft but another one, but they're in sort of actual finish which i thought was quite surprising for hella normally these inks do go to sort of another company to rebox them or rebadge them so i thought this was actually really cool particularly because it featured a finished aircraft on the front with a bleak background during the course of the 90s the aircraft was released by smur the czech manufacturer uh, it was also released by mr craft and intac now i'm not sure if it's controversial to say but as far as i understand a lot of boxings of the uh the, the MS-406 now are sort of mirrored versions of the 406 and you see it with a couple of French aircraft and my understanding is that they've been sort of reverse engineered but that's speculative because I don't really know but it does appear that Hella still holds the moulds for these because they have re-released it in 2017. This is part of their Musee series or their museum series and the museum series is essentially Hella's core line of products similar I'd say to sort of Airfix's vintage classics. The difference being that Hella is not as well known for producing new molds. In fact, this year in 2023, they're releasing one of their biggest new molds in a while, which is the EQC Hawkeye. And I'd love to see some of these aircraft get that treatment because these are such famous, amazing aircraft. But the Musee series is relatively cheap. They're not super expensive. They are obviously, unfortunately, more expensive for people like us outside of the EU. But they still seem relatively cheap and they're nice aircraft. Just remember, they're old. <laughs> if you see Hella Musee, then they are old aircraft. <laughs> The other thing worth mentioning is that the Musee series tends to have new decals, so you'll get the original decals and then you'll get additional markings for it, and I definitely saw this in this kit. They also have the original instructions, but then they have a separate, or sometimes it's in the back, a colour print, which will show you how the paint scheme should go and how the decals should go, and I actually really like this. I really love Hell's Musee series. I think between Airfix and Hella, they've taken two very different approaches for vintage kits and I like both of them. I just hope that in time it becomes even more distinguished, you know, which ones are vintage and which ones aren't. I love Hella's Musee series. I think it's a really clever way of reboxing and remastering these kits and giving you a wealth of choices without having to go to the aftermarket. Well, we've made it halfway. 
stay custom or breathe make sure you give the video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and hey if you really like what you see become a channel member you can do it for as little as one pound 99 a month right let's get on to the unboxing for once we're looking at the back of the box first and you can see the made in france sort of sticker on there this is the marine sondier garçon six I think that's how you say it anyway. <laughs> now you can see the screws there, the instructions and everything else. The instructions are the original instructions with this coloured sheet next to it so you can see exactly what the paint scheme should look like and how the details should go on. So this is a white plastic model kit and I find Hellas plastic quite soft compared to some of its competitors and I did actually find that my model slightly curved once it was put together. Not sure how that happened but it did but the detailing is really really nice and once the whole kit's put together the fabric detail does look fabulous. The clear part I did lose unfortunately but once I got the replacement it seems fine but they seem quite delicate and the decals well you'll see more in the construction but I'm really impressed by the selection on offer here. Slay Hella! I mentioned it in the kit tree, but although this is an older kit, it feels much newer because of, you know, the amount of options you get, the coloured edition for the uh, markings. It's just such a nice kit. I, re I really like it. I love what they're doing in this museum series. I think it's really clever and it's a really smart move, I think. I just hope a couple more aircraft that I really adore get added to this series, but we'll see that in time. Let's get into the construction of the kit there. And well, <laughs> for those of you who are yes, this is one of my first airbrush uh, kits. Now, for those of you who've seen my Henshaw HS123 video will know that I was using a bent needle at the time, so it did help them spitting. I did eventually end up buying a new needle and nozzle and did remedy this issue, but this model was done entirely with that setting and it doesn't show too badly. I'm really happy with the end result, but I just wanted to give you a fair shout. I'm not on an off day. I am a noob for airbrushing because this is still very, very new to me and I did have damaged equipment, which is my own fault. It's not not the manufacturer's, it's mine for like moving house and thinking I lost it for three years. But yeah, let's get into it. So to start this kit, we are cutting off all the big parts. There's not many parts to this kit, as I mentioned earlier. Now, I mentioned in the unboxing that the plastic seems quite malleable and I did find that my fuselage centerpieces did warp slightly and I don't know if this was just from the heat. It probably wasn't the sun given I made this in the winter. So yeah, it's something I found. I did leave it on the radiator as uh, one of my colleagues and other content creator Moz suggested and it did seem to resolve mostly but it's something just I guess to bear in mind. And I did lose the cockpit from my original one as I also mentioned in the unboxing so I ended up just buying another kit and then waiting for my Hella replacement parts to come to uh, make that kit complete again. You can see I've stuck the wings together just so that they can set ready for full assembly later on. You can see I'm painting the inside sort of minty pea green and this is just from looking online on references and seeing what it should be but to be honest it's going to be barely visible by the time you actually finish painting it. And uh, yeah, so once you've done that, you just have to paint the rest of the cockpit, which is only a couple of pieces. It's basically a seat and the backing you can see, and you're pretty much done with the cockpit. That's pretty much it. We've stuck the tail sections on as well, just so they again can set whilst we get the pilot made, and that's so the wings and everything's all ready for when we pop it all together and we basically have a finished plane. The pilot is very much a case of trust the process, and I'm using online reference photos in order to make sure I get somewhat accurate colours. I'm painting this with Ravel Aquacolor, and there are only a couple of pieces that I actually did this. It's pretty much the only hand painted parts where I use Ravel Aquacolor, because for the first time I'm doing a model entirely with a different brand, which is Life Color. Now, Life Color is a brand that when I first got my airbrush many, many, many years ago, pretty much never used it, I did use. And uh, I've come back to them for this with their Army de l'Air set. Now the pilot, as I said, is being painted with a Real Aquacolor and I really enjoyed painting it. Very much a trust the process sort of dealio, but once he was finished and inside the actual plane, I thought he looked pretty spiffing and smart. This, uh, well, I'm from the paint scheme we chose, a Polish pilot in the Army de l'Air. So yeah, he looks okay, doesn't he? It's uh, unfortunately I didn't get his face fully before we popped him in, but you'll see him sitting in here now. And I'm actually gluing him in with some gluing glaze, which was sent to me by Jackson, who's a viewer who said, hey, you really need this for your cockpit uh, sort of canopies. And uh, 
wow I, I love this stuff it's so good so handy and uh, yeah so thank you for sending this it's I like using it for a pilot sometimes so if I do want to ever remove it in the future for whatever reason I can do so without causing you know as much damage if it was done with uh, poly cement now I'm gluing the fuselage together just the two halves popping them together and then after that we're going to pop the wings on it because at the moment I think it looks mostly straight so the warping I think was done afterwards and uh, just before we've actually put the glue on because that was a dry fitting before we're gonna do the propeller which is just the propeller the cone on the front and then the back section to stop it falling out when you're spinning it now mine does sort of hang quite freely I think this is sort of just the nature of the kit sometimes you do find that the propellers can hang a little bit loosey-goosey but I'd rather they do that than they just didn't you know spin at all because sometimes you really do want to move it for a photo or something if you can't it's a bit annoying so I'm glad that I did manage to uh, get this one sort of sorted really nicely and there we go we're popping it in sort of sitting it on there <laughs> and there we go we're aligning the air intake at the front there and you can see further back under the wings there there it is is the radiator that goes up and down the uh, absolute nightmare <laughs> that it was resembling the undercarriage now where we've set the wings in and you can see some gaps we are going to fill in most of the gaps with filler and they're not going to be too visible once we actually paint it all together there are a couple that i think i didn't get quite right on the wings on the top but the bottom isn't too bad the undercarriage is very basic pretty rudimentary but i mean again this is a really old kit so what do you expect but I have found, to its credit, it's held up incredibly well, which is more than can be said for some of the newer kits out there, like the, uh, you know, Alpha Jet that held I released. <laughs> Once we've stuck them on, we're going to leave it to dry on these two pots of uh, Aquacolor, and now you can see that it's bent, and I don't know why. I don't know why it bent. It must have been the heat or something. Now, I am airbrushing this, and as I said, this is with the broken needles, so please forgive me. I didn't get very good footage of Zyvex, because I was very nervous doing this for the first time. And yeah, it's uh, it's not a great job. Initially, I did manage to tidy it up, and I think the end model looks really, really nice. It's not the best in the world. You're going to see better four or sixes out there. I mean, I'm not a professional by any standards, but it looks pretty messy now. I have done the paint a bit too thick. I was learning how to thin the paint. This is my first ever time really ever using Life Color, and I'm finding them easier to use than I found the Vallejo or even the Revell Aqua Color that I'm very used to in brush painting, but not an airbrush. This is definitely the one I'm finding the easiest to use. But yeah, I didn't get very good footage. Unfortunately, I pretty much just got this, and then you'll uh, suddenly see that it's painted. And I basically used a lot of good weathering to make sure that it does look nice in the end because I think it needed it given my lack of expertise with the airbrush. You're seeing the underneath now and this is again pre-weathering, pre-everything. So this is just the model finish. Done a gloss top coat over it just to make sure that the decals went on nicely. And I'm cutting up the decals because actually to fit some of these on, you do have to put a little bit that goes onto the undercarriage sort of uh, wheel cover and so i just cut a little slit out and i use those instructions which are fabulous to align sort of exactly what needs to be cut out now it is a bit of a guesswork and if you're newer at modeling don't worry if you ever screw it up you can always just do a different scheme because there are so many schemes that came with this and to be honest you could leave them i guess because i mean who's going to know what's underneath the model if it's sat on a shelf anyway except you so you know it's always okay just to work within your limits but i wanted to push myself i never really do things like this where I cut them you know <laughs> I'm always too scared of messing it up the fear takes over so I just went for it and I'm really glad I did because I think I got a really nice result in the end the same goes on the other side of the wing as well so where that eight is you do have to cut that one off and you'll see me do that in a moment I'm using water to set the decals down and I use decal fix afterwards just to make sure that they all sit down nice and smooth onto the surface and they ended up sitting on really nicely these decals are good i probably wouldn't say they're quite cartograph level but they're definitely getting there from um i don't know how to say it but aile or ailed <laughs> it's a-i-l-e-s france um it's a, they're really good mock decals i've not really found any difficulty with them i think they're probably just slightly less robust than cartograph but as long as you're getting them on you use a brush and you're delicate with them you know which you should be anyway you shouldn't be manhandling them like i do and you're probably going to be fine. <laughs> the 
back bit then is just the French flag with the type of the aircraft on it and it looks really really lovely. I liked putting these bits on, I, I always like the tricolore on the back of it. Now one of the tail uh, bits I did actually manage to get lopsided whilst it was drying and didn't realise and I glossed it so that's the number 16 that's on there. Unfortunately that is a bit messed up, it's just sort of gradated slightly to the right but there's not a lot I can do about it because I've already lost it and I'm not painting over it because then I just won't have a 16 on there. So, you know, we're just we're just going with it. We're just going with it. The roundels all applied really nicely as well. There wasn't really any difficulty with them. And the Polish insignia that goes on the side to show that this was a Polish squadron or the Polish apples and exiles, uh, it's sometimes sort of noted I've seen. They look really nice as well. The colours are really bright and beautiful. As I said, we're going to do a lot of weathering after this to make sure that the aircraft really shows its fabric self and just looks like it's been in the battle. Okay, so obviously this was quite a straightforward kit. Uh, my airbrushing skills do leave a lot to be desired, but they are improving and I think you'll see by the end of this series that actually my airbrushing has come a long, long way. This this model is probably one of the ones I'm most proud of, purely because it was one of the first airbrush models I did entirely with airbrush. Not counting my Etches 123 because I did have to go back and do brush amendments as you saw in the video because I was really struggling with the paints. But as discussed during the course of construction, I really enjoy the paints that I'm using and I think I've become a life color convert. Anyway, let's go have a look at this MS406 pop thing off. See, I'm really proud of it. I think it looks so good. Now, something I've been dying to say this whole time. I... I had lost the canopy first. And in fact, the French front, I lost two canopies and I had to buy two new kits to get the canopies because I could not get replacements. I have contacted Heller and asked them if I could get a replacement canopy because I'd rather not have a kit that's just sat around. And it would actually be really cool if I could redo sort of some of these in different markings, particularly for different nations. So it's something I just thought I'd say because it did make me laugh that I just bought a whole new kit for the canopy and I really hope I can just get an easier replacement. I think clear parts should be overproduced by most manufacturers because they're probably the part that gets damaged the most, particularly by more inexperienced modelers who don't know not to use either a lot or ideally any of the uh, sort of police demand. That's why ever since it was suggested to me I've used glue and glaze because you do not have that risk. Before I go into buy and fly, I just want to say again, like I really enjoyed this project. I really enjoyed doing all of these French aircraft and the paints. My God, using the right paints for you, and it's different for everyone. Like I didn't go on with Vallejo paints. That's just me. I'm not very experienced with airbrushing. I probably need more experience to use in prop play. However, life color. Oh my God, <laughs> like revelation. I. I'm shocked. I, I've used them now on five models, six models, seven, maybe seven models at the time of this filming, and I love them. <laughs> I I have I, I have five sets of life color now. May have become a convert from Rebel Aquacolor to life color. Um, still love Rebel Aquacolor for hat painting. Just the airbrushing. Oh my God, life color, babe, babe. Uh, 
<laughs> you slay. Right, let's go into Biofly. So, this kit is not very expensive, and it's not changed significantly since it was originally produced. The moulds are cleaned up, we know that Heller have said that they cleaned up their moulds, particularly for the older types to try and make them nicer. How many of these have been cleaned up at this point? It's unclear. I will say that with some of the other aircraft I made during the course of this sort of fret of Feb I will say that with some of the airbutt aircraft they made during Fevier France, the I don't think all of them are up to the same standards as each other. So that's something we'll just have to see. But for the MS406, I think this new boxing is significantly better than the old boxing. One, the decals are amazing. You get so many nice options, you can make so many nice kits for this aircraft, and the colour sheet that comes with it, which actually for this was to scale pretty much, is amazing. I This was the nicest decal experience I think I've ever had on a World War II aircraft, and that is saying a lot. And that's not me throwing shade at Airfix, or a Valve, or a Tallery, who I hold in extremely high regard. It was just... I don't know, it was a really, really good experience. Obviously the kit is basic. It's very, very basic. But that doesn't mean it's bad. I've said many times how much I adore FX's videos. I mean, I've made several vintage classics now, including the G50, which was one of the nicest model kits I've ever done. One of the ones I was most passionate about, and I got a really nice end result with. So I'm not shading older kits. It just means it has less detail initially, but again, I think this looks really nice. You don't need to put much into it, and I think my own product looks honestly fantastic. Especially for a noob like me who doesn't really know how to use an airbrush and is still learning her techniques and skill sets. Like, I think it looks good. To me, this is an equivalent to any starter set that you would get, whether it's a Spitfire, or a Hurricane, or a BF-109. In terms of pricing, I've seen this kit varying between sort of the 9 to 13 pounds mark, and in Euros, I've seen it as low as I think 750 euros once, I think it was on a sale though, up to sort of about the 14 euro mark. It's basically the same as it costs in power sterling to be honest. Outside of Europe these kits are probably more expensive but in Europe these are really accessible. Categorically these are higher cost than their equivalent Airfix Vintage Classics. However one thing that these kits have over their sort of Airfix equivalents is this seal here that comes on pretty much all of the Hella Musee sets that I've done. I'm not sure about the newer kits, honestly, I'm not sure. But this seal is a French flag and it just says made in France, but obviously it also says fabriqué en France. Obviously I'm not going to go too deep into the ethical implication, but I think it's really interesting that their kits are all produced in France and I personally don't think it's such a high cost. I'm quite happy to pay 10 to 12 pounds for these sorts of kits. I think they've got definitely my money's worth. However, if you saw sort of that next to say the Fiat G50, you know, one's 699, one's 12 quid. So someone who's definitely watching their money and has to buy paints, glues, brushes, the FX offering definitely looks more appealing. Nevertheless, I'm gonna say buy this kit. It's fantastic. I love it. I am a bit of a hella fan girl, I'm gonna be honest, but that doesn't mean that I can't criticize them. And I definitely feel like Hella should re-release this alongside. To be honest, I feel like all oh, their really important aircraft, so you know the MS406, the Block 152, the Devotline D520, they should all be re-released to have really modern and fantastic detail. But, you know. Hell has been in administration more times than I've been in serious relationships, so let's just see how long they last. Because although I really love Hella, the global economy sometimes does not love Hell. <laughs> but let's all just praise to Zeus and Ra and all the gods that Hella survived this. Because they are doing some serious work at the moment and I'd love to see what they do. Well, I think that's going to be it for me this time, and obviously make sure you tune in for the rest of Fevier Francais. We're going to look at several more French aircraft. I'll be releasing that War Thunder video later on in the week, so stay tuned for that, and we'll have a look at the NS406 flying around, and maybe they get intercepted on a training mission. If you like raising here, make sure to hit the subscribe button. New videos come out every Monday, and hit the like button as well. It really does help me out. 
leave a comment down below of what your favorite French aircraft is. I don't care whether it's World War II, modern or pre-World War II, whatever you like, your favorite French aircraft, please. We do also have channel membership starting as little as £1.99, which just helps support the channel. You do get some additional community posts, but it's just there if you do want to go, hey, I really like what you're doing and I'd love to help you out. So yeah, when you can leave super chats too, I think. I don't really understand how they work. I'm going to be honest, but it is a thing. Yeah, that's going to do it for me. Bye. A big thank you to my channel members who helped make these videos possible. A shout out goes to the advanced kit subscribers, which are Crazy Loacher and Explosive Water. But obviously, regardless whatever level you're on, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here today, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And there's a recommended video for you on the right. I do upload new videos every Monday. Have fun modelling!